You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome back to another edition of Locked On Seminoles. Happy Saturday, everybody, and you know what day it is, you know what time it is. It is Pick 'em with Mr. Danny Domino. Danny boy, what's good and good looking? How you doing, buddy? Happy Saturday, everybody. Let's uh, let's make this one another another profitable one. Let's make some money. Let's make some money. Do you want to remind the folks, you know, how uh, how our double down did this past weekend? Um, I think our double down won won pretty easily. Yeah, from right. I mean, the, for those who don't remember, uh, we gave you a bad pick the week before with UNC minus twelve and a half. Sorry, folks. Even sometimes the best, you know, don't hit with their mark. But we did give the Cincinnati minus two, and not only did we cash that. We didn't even have to sweat it out one bit. That was just, whew. That one game wasn't even close. It wasn't even close at all. And, folks, now that we're on the YouTube platform, for those of you not listening, check out, uh, you can check us out over on YouTube. Now I'll be actually be able to share my screen, actually be able to go along with these picks, actually with Danny. So, Danny, Ooh. are you ready to start us off? I'm ready to rock and roll, baby. So, folks, let's head over to... I think that we honestly should start off with one of your regulars. I um, I have a feeling that you have a um, that you have sort of an inkling where you want to go down to in Alabama, specifically Southern Alabama. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna rock with South Alabama here um, against Texas State, South Alabama, and this is gonna go along with the trendsetter we talk about later. Um, South Alabama's minus three and a half, I believe. Um, their plus yardage per game is 75. Texas State's is minus 104. So you're looking at a team who their offense is better than their defense, and then vice versa. You actually have a defense who isn't very good and an offense who struggles. Um, Texas Texas State lost to Eastern Michigan last week, 59 to 21. They lost to D one AA Incarnate Wood, 42 to 34. Their only win of the season is a team who I had to find out the hard way is not very good in Florida International, um, and they beat them <laughs> in overtime. So this team, not very good here. Um, South Alabama lost to uh, Louisiana, the Raging Cajuns, but they outgained them by 104 yards. They had they lost 20 to 18, and that's including Louisiana Lafayette scoring two touchdowns in the first four minutes of the game. Um, take that out. That's an 18 to six game. I know you can't do it, but sometimes you got to look at it that way to boost up your confidence. South Alabama has won a couple close games this year. So I like them to pull out a game that I don't really expect to be as tight as the experts think, just quote Lee Corso. Uh, give me a South Alabama, the Jaguars minus three and a half. So um, this is going to be one of those games where I'm not touching it primarily because I have no idea whether or not to go about either of these teams. I think Texas State actually, that's a team that needs to win some games or else their head coach is actually going to be fired. That's what I've been hearing, you know, from, I listen to a lot of Cover 3 podcasts. Danny, I don't know if you listen to that. It's a really good podcast, folks. Uh, this is not a plug or anything. I'm just a huge fan of them. And I know they talk about te- Texas State a lot, but that's a, that's a game that actually I'm not touching because primarily, if I don't understand, if I don't know anything about it, and I watch a lot of college football, especially if it's like super, super down, that, you know, in the weeds, you'll see them a six shooter have a really, you know, juicy, juicy pick in there. So I'm not touching it, but folks, if you want to ride with Danny, take South Alabama at uh, minus three and a half. Is that minus what you're three about? and a half? I don't even worry about buying a hook down to minus three. Ooh, okay, minus three and a half. There we go, Danny. There we go, Danny. And then let's see. Why don't we now move on to? Let me see. I have your sheet up here. Let's head on over to the team that right now actually surprising a lot of people in the Pac-12, and that's Oregon State. I love the Beavs in this situation. Again, I believe they're minus three and a half. Man, Washington State, they got their quarterback back last week. They had a big win against Cal. But Jane Delora, he's played in four games. They're 2-2, two and two, and that includes a win over D1AA Portland State. And they're only averaging 19 points a game, and he's thrown for 160 yards a game. I truly don't think that quarterback makes that big of a difference in this specific scenario. Um, again, you heard me talk about yards per game. Washington State's minus 36, meaning their defense gives up 36 more yards per game than their offense gains, whereas Oregon State's plus 77, and Oregon State's probably played a harder schedule. Um, once you get into conference games, that, that's some of the stuff I really start digging into because uh, I think that gives you a whole grasp of the team overall. 
And Oregon State has balance, man. They have 208 yards passing, 230 yards rushing per game. They have five guys with 100 yards receiving, and they have four guys over 100 yards rushing. No crazy big playmakers. They don't have a, a, a Drake London like USC has, but they do have a lot of pieces across the board that can help, including an old Florida State boy and Trayshawn Hilton. Um, and then if you look at Harrison, their, Harrison. Harrison on, my you got to get his name right, man. Trayshawn Harrison, come I'm on, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, if you look at the common opponent in back-to-back weeks, Oregon State beat USC 45-27, to and they outgained them by 104 yards. Washington State lost to USC 45 to 14. They got outgained by 170 yards. And like I said last week with my USC pick, USC is one of those teams that they're going to beat up on the bad teams this year and they're going to struggle against the good teams. Using that logic, Oregon State's a good team. Washington State's a bad team. I'll gladly take the minus three and a half up there in Pullman. Yeah. If this game was being played, I want to say what's the name? That's the city in, or it's not Portland. Hold on. No, no they're uh, Corvallis. Thank you. That's what I wanted. The Corvallis. I was about to look it up, as you can tell, with the with now now that we're on YouTube. Google search. Um, if this was being played in Corvallis, I would take them by maybe ten points because I think Oregon State right now is a team that's just performing really, really well. They have a solid quarterback, Trayshawn Harrison. I think actually he's been he's found the right spot for him over at Oregon. Now that's in Pullman, I still feel comfortable on taking that minus three and a half. I'm going to ride you with this one actually because I think Washington State is not that good. I think Nick Rolovich is a horrible head coach, folks. Take Oregon State at minus three and a half. And I really want to touch the total here, but I'm going to practice a little bit of restraint here. I'm not touching that, so I'm going to keep this ride with Danny at Oregon State minus three. Would you three be on the half. over or the under of that? I, I was thinking the over. Okay. I was thinking the over, but if not, but the well, fact that I, had good, to like, I was thinking the under because I don't think Washington State's offense is. They that's, got a couple yeah. playmakers, but again, that coaching staff, I have no faith in. Yeah, that's what stopped me, honestly. I was like, I don't know where to, you know, what to ride with that. But so Oregon State, minus three and a half. That's right. Go. And now, go bees. Go bees, go bees, baby. Love me some beavers. So now let's ride on over to something that, you know, has been making us a lot of money this year. And to me, I think that's something that we like to call Danny's bankroll. Builder. Cashed again Danny. last week with my wolf pack, baby. Where's my flag? Oh, I don't, yes, I don't know what yes, flag yes, down or else I pull it out. That game was never in doubt either. Um, I'm going to a team that I've sort of been hot on. I've been cold on. I've told you to take them. I've told you to fade them. Last week, I told you a total for them. This week, I'm on Memphis plus 160. Uh, these teams really basically mirror each other. If you look at Memphis and Tulsa, their stats, everything like that. Um, but man, Memphis, a heartbreaker against Temple last week that they shouldn't have lost. I think they're going to bounce back. They got some good people. Also, I'm taking the over of this game. I think it's at 61. Oh. I have no idea how it's so low. Neither of these teams have defenses. I think it's a little. I think the total is a little deflated from Tulsa's performance against Houston last week. And I think the spreads equal out with Memphis losing to Temple outright as a 10-point favorite and then Tulsa losing at home to Houston as a three-and-a-half-point favorite. So I think those sort of equal out. And Memphis, a couple weeks ago, I told you to take the Roadrunners out of San Antonio, UTSA. That's a very good football team, and Memphis choked that game away. And a name to watch. If you haven't watched Memphis – at least watch him for the offense because Calvin Austin the third, that, he's so good. That guy is a dog. He had a thousand yards last year. This year he's already, I believe, close to seven hundred yards and seven touchdowns. Averages close to twenty yards per catch. This guy, you could tell he was in Mike Norvell's system because he is a playmaker, and hopefully that's what we're getting from our young cats down at Tallahassee. But man, this guy is electric. Big time fan of him. But Memphis, I believe they're uh, they're 160. Drake, is that right? What's it say on the line right now? They are 160. That is correct. They're plus three underdogs, plus 160. Actually, actually, no. Since we refresh this from earlier, it's actually a 150 now. Ah, 150. But, man, Tulsa, if you watch that game against Houston last week, you have absolutely no faith in them whatsoever. Um, I think that scare they had with Oklahoma State and Ohio State this year gave some people credit, and they forget that they lost to a D1 AA school in UC Davis. So I'm actually am going to take Memphis at plus 150. I think that's really good value. I think you're right about that, where Calvin Austin is that, is that offense. That kid is literally – that's who we want Mike Nervell to develop players. Malik that's McClain, why we have like a Malik McClain. Malik McClain, I think, is going to be that guy for them. And if we're being – if we're going to keep it a buck – 
if DJ Matthews had stayed here, that's who I think would have been with that as well. I think that would have been the perfect yeah. little shifty guy like, in the slot. But I'm going to ride with you at plus 150. However, I will take the under at 60 and a half. Really? I'm on the over here. Whew. And I think that game flies over. I don't think it's close. That game that over hits in the third quarter. I can see that, but that the I, past two yeah. times I've taken Memphis overs. That and my two past two bets with them, and they haven't hit. They pulled one out of out of their uh, bleep last week to hit that over. There was two touchdowns in the last like four minutes of the game. And see, like a lot of the times I've seen, like even the past two years, where if you want a Memphis over, they have to pull some stuff out of their. To so like get anything, and to me, I'm gonna go with the trend where like if it's been if it if it's gone against me twice, I'm just gonna you know this is not the best logic, but I'm just gonna go against that. So, folks, ride with Danny with the Memphis plus one fifty. I'm taking that as well. However, the boys are at odds with, with the their odds. odds. Take Danny at over sixty and a half as of this recording, or ride with your boy at under sixty and a half. So now let's go from the bankroll builder to another, you know, one of your, you know, you want something on your card. I know that you're a big fan of the I think what they call the miners over University of Texas El Paso. Oh, the UTEP miners. Love them. Minus two and a half against Southern Miss. This Southern Miss team I don't think is good. Um, I'm just not doing it. They're only one of the years against Grand Lake State. The Golden Eagles are vulnerable against the pass. And UTEP thrives on big plays. They already have a receiver with 600 yards receiving, uh, and another with 300. Southern Miss lost to night or 24 to 19 to Rice, who is an awful football team. 21 to nine to Troy, and 31 to seven to the Jaguars of South Alabama. They're only averaging 12 points a game against D1 teams. UTEP outgains Southern Miss by 100 yards per game. I UTEP. They got the balance on offense and defense. They have a really good running back. I forget what his name is. But I'm going down to Conference USA here. Give me the UTEP Miners, minus two and a half, I believe they're at. I, I'm i just not big on Southern Miss here. I think it's a, it's a trap. I don't. Yeah, I don't think Southern Miss is a good team. Um, if I remember correctly, didn't their head coach resign like in week two? There's or three? something weird going on about it. It's That old program's in shambles right now. I will ride with you with this UTEP minus two. I have actually watched with UTEP. I mean, you're right. That's a de- that's a decent Conference USA team. I've actually watched an obscene amount of Conference USA football. I don't know why. I think I have a problem. I've watched an obscene you know, amount of Conference USA basketball. It's very okay. weird. But you need to see, you need to seek some help. So, folks, help Danny out to get some help. Take UTEP at minus two and. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm going to ride that with you as well because I think Southern Miss is a very bad team. Honestly, folks, if there's an alternate lineup that out there up to maybe minus seven, I would take that too. But, folks, take UTEP at minus two. And then now, Danny, we're going to go to what we think is the game of the week. It's also something near and dear to Max's heart. It is Penn State in Iowa. So... Are you going to go with the Lions? Oh, we are. Or do you believe? Or do you believe in the Hawkeyes hype? We are, baby. I'm rolling Penn State here plus one and a half. Um, both these teams have great defenses. Penn State has a better offense. Penn State has the best player on the field, Jahan Dotson. That dude is an animal. Um, I love how Yursich. Shout out Shippensburg. Um, Yursich uses the tight ends. They have three of them who are very good. Uh, uses them in the red zone. Likes those little shovel chips, little tight end chips in the red zone to get, you know, in the red zone to score or on second and third and two and three. Let the big boys rumble, fall forward, get the yards that are needed. And Iowa State struggled with lesser teams, man. They didn't cover the spread against Kent State. They were losing to Colorado State, I believe, at halftime and only won by 10. They, they were. Now, granted, I was on them last week against uh, Maryland. That score was extremely misleading. I think Maryland had seven turnovers. Six. Trust me. Six. I took Maryland. <laughs> Six. All my buddies who were on Maryland, I told them to take Iowa. They're like, nah, it's a trap. I got lucky. Um, but the big thing here, it's a Kinnick, one of the hardest environments to play in all sports. It's a 3 o'clock local kickoff. It's not a 7 or an 8 o'clock local kickoff. Playing at Kinnick at night is a – you're not winning. Just take it, take it on the chin and move on. But Penn State actually has had some success at Kinnick in the past couple of years. Past couple of times they've been down there. 
so I'm rolling with the Nittany Lions. I think they have the better quarterback, better overall player, uh, and Jahan Dotson. And call me crazy, I think they have a better defense as well. So give me the better quarterback, playmaker, and defense. As an underdog, I'll gladly take the plus one and a half. So Iowa's a team that's really, really interesting to me, primarily because – hold on, i got to put my volume down a little bit. Primarily because I don't think they're as complete as everybody else thinks they are. I mean, I've bet against them, like, I think two or three times. I think I got burned really bad. I will say I got burned really bad last week um, against Penn State. That's that's definitely that. I'm sorry. Against, uh, I, yeah, I was gonna say because you're well, you're big on two tackle the lowest little brother. Yeah, I, I thought Telly was the truth up until he threw four interceptions in the first quarter with inside of his own thirty. So, like to me, that's like a misleading score. I agree. Like, but that defense is legitimately a top five defense. The problem because they a lot of people think that turnovers are luck based. The thing is, though, you need to be in position to capitalize on those turnovers. And once you get the turnover, you have to make sure you score actually on the turnover. And they're probably the best team in the country for that. That being said, that offense is very... <sighs> the offense, I think, is a lot worse than people think. I think Spencer, uh, Spencer Yetris is the starting QB there. I think he capitalizes on short fields. I think they had, like, what, 60 yards of offense, and they had 21 points. Which to me was absolutely absurd. Yeah, it's absurd. Uh, even if you go back okay. to that Iowa State game, sorry for interrupting, but a that Iowa State win does not look nearly as impressive now. Indiana didn't look good, and they had two pick sixes. At one point, their starting cornerback was outscoring Indiana. So, I mean, they had great turnover luck. I think Sean Clifford's a veteran QB. Your such is going to have a a safe but aggressive game plan, um, and that's why I'm on any lines. I'm not sure where you were going. Sorry for interrupting, but. Oh, no, I'm taking any lines, but I'm taking the points. I'm, not, I'm sorry, the point. I'm taking the money line straight up. I'm taking that because it's minus 105 for the points, so I'm just going straight to the money line. And I'm also taking the under at 41. I took it at 43 and a half actually earlier in the week. Yeah. 41, I know, is a very low-scoring game, folks, but Big Ten football, especially in the middle of in like the early October, it's just ugly defensive football. It's like a slobber knocker fest. I would be surprised if at a half it's like three to seven, and now I'll, I'll be sitting pretty right there. So that's just you know my truth with that. And did for Danny, take Penn State at plus one. You want to ride with your boy, take Penn State money line at plus 105 and take the under currently at 41. Now, before we head on over to the Super Dog, which also just happens to be, I think, our double down of the week. Let's do our new segment that we had last week. Better beware, folks. This is something that we we always believe that there is one game out there that is these lines are made specifically to trick casual bettors, casual gamers into putting more money in than there should be. Last week, we said Arkansas versus Georgia. What is the better better wear for this one? I'm looking at Utah, USC. Here. There's a couple of factors that play into this. Like I said earlier on this podcast and last week, I don't think USC is going to play good against good teams. I think they're going to struggle. I still think Utah is a good team. I still love my ticket for Utah to win the South at plus 250. But there's some outside stuff for this Utah team but I'm just not sure how they're going to react to it. I just – I struggle taking this on any side because I would be on Utah plus three. But I'm staying away. I mean, Utah is two and two on the season. Their two losses have both been on the road to San Diego State in a triple overtime game, who San Diego State is now ranked in the top 25, and they also lost to BYU. Um, so both their losses have been the quality opponents. I think Utah should win this game. I would take them plus three. But again, there's just a lot of outside stuff going on here. Um, I would strictly stay away from this game. Yeah, Utah, USC. I just I don't know what Utah is either. They Connor Brewer, who was the Baylor transfer quarterback, who used to be starting, who was started there, I think, the first two games. He got benched for, I think, Cam Rising is the new quarterback at Utah. Yeah, he just left immediately. I think he's retiring from football now, too. I think he's just like, he knows it's just. I don't think he has the passion for it anymore. I'm not going to put words in the kid's mouth, yeah. even though I kind of just did. But, yeah, now they have a Cam Rising that is the new starting quarterback at Utah. So stay away from Utah, USC. Stay away from South Carolina, Tennessee. And now I think it's about time that we let the dogs out. It is now super dog time, Danny. And this is, a, this is going to hurt me to say because my little brother, who listens to every episode, who watches now all the YouTube clips, went to UCF is a proud alumni of UCF. And now he's about to listen to me and you absolutely shred their team and say why ECU is going to cover plus 10. So I'm not going to shred I'm not going to shred uh UCF not completely. 
I think they have a lot of holes in their team, but I'm not going to shred them. I'm going to leave the shred in the UCF to the ECU Pirates this weekend. ECU has a very explosive offense. They have their quarterback, Holton Ayers, already has 1,200 yards passing. They got 800 yards on the ground from their top two backs. And believe it or not, they have seven receivers with more than 100 yards receiving. That right there is balance. I think one of the big differences is actually going to be UCF played Navy last week. They lost a heartbreaker, and they were on the field for 39 minutes, their defense. So I think their defense is going to be wore down a little bit. I think they got chop blocked and stuff like that. Their legs might be feeling it. And then Dylan Gabriel being out, man, I just – that guy's good. That guy's a stud. And him being out, I really think, hinders them. ECU's been playing pretty good lately. They did lose to South Carolina and App State early in the year. They're on a three-game winning streak. Uh, and I think they have a great chance to make it four here, even though it's down in the bounce house at night. But give me the ECU, the purple and gold. Give them to me plus 10. Absolutely take that with no hesitation. Yeah, I just think UCF isn't good this year. I think them losing Dylan Gabriel hurt them really yeah. badly. I think Gus Malzahn is not adjusting to the group of five source style of play. Also for the personnel he has, he's not used to that after being at Auburn for so long. And East Carolina, if I remember correctly, they – Kept it close, I think, not last year, but the year before. And didn't they also beat them a few years ago? I think that was one of the games that had like a weird lightning delay. Power Eastern went out Carolina. of the stadium. Yeah, and Eastern Carolina is like a – they're a weird team yeah. to, bet against, to bet on, this, whether it be for points or whether it be for, you know, for spreads. You never know what's going to happen with them. They are – they're fun to watch. They're fun to watch, and they are honestly chaos. And honestly, on this pro- podcast for DGENs, by DGENs for gambling – we embrace chaos here. We love chaos. And chaos is named Eastern Carolina Pirates. Folks, ride with the boys. The double down of the week is officially the East Carolina Pirates. Evis, I'm so sorry. I love you still. But I got to go against you, my guy. So East Carolina plus 10. Danny, it's been a pleasure having you here. But before we go, we need to end off with a six-shot salute, our little six-shooter, if you will. Now I'm going to pull up your chart here. I'm going to time you now for the minute. Tell me when you're ready. Just a second here. Just a second. Let me get everything. Take your time. Let me get a nice breath in. I'm going to make sure I, I don't have to breathe when I talk. And as Danny, you know, preps himself over there, gets ready for a six-shooter, folks. Thank you all so much for listening, for so much for the love and support. Please, if you can, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, either on our podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast from. And also, don't forget to hit the like button on this YouTube video. Hit subscribe and hit the little bell layer because you will know when we drop any more videos. So, Danny boy, oh Danny boy, oh Danny boy, you ready? Give me a uh, give me a countdown here, and I'm ready to rock. Three, two, one, go! All right, first one of the six shooter. I'm going with Wyoming plus six. I think this line's a little deflated after Wyoming almost somehow lost to UConn last week. I think they were looking ahead to Mountain West play. Elevation won't hurt them. Give me Wyoming plus six. Moving down to the Monarchs, Old Dominion plus twenty one. ODU stinks, but they're not terrible. They were down 11 to Liberty at half and had chances to win their last two games. I think it's a team that's hungry. They got confidence. I think they're they're big against Marshall, plus 21. I got BYU, minus 5.5. Boise State's overrated. Faded them last week, faded them again. Michigan, minus 3.5. I don't know if Michigan's good. I don't know if Nebraska's good, but I know I love fading Scott Frost. Michigan State, team total over 27.5. Rutgers can't stop a nosebleed. Michigan State is 17th in the country in points per game. And lastly, I'm going with Baylor, minus 3. West Virginia starting conference play 0-2. I think they're going to be a little deflated. Baylor's 1-1 one one if they can get this win at home. Moving 2-1 and one on the season in conference. Everything's still in play. In the words of Captain Price from Call of Duty Modern Warfare, when you do the little obstacle course, you're getting slower, my guy. You were 10 seconds over after you had got the blazing quick 58 seconds last week. Listen, you got to get 1% better every every single day. I'm not going to hold it against you, but I will give you mine really, really quickly. All right, Danny, let me know when I'm ready to go. You ready? Sure. Three, two, one, go. All right, folks, two from the hip real quick. Give me Illinois plus 10 and Illinois under four, two and a half. Folks, I know that Illinois is not particularly good, but guess who they play this weekend? They play Wisconsin, an anemic offense, and I think every time I bet against Wisconsin, it's paid out, it's paid out, it's paid out. So take Illinois plus 10, Illinois under 24, 20, uh, 42 and a half. Also, let's go over to Wake and Louisville. Take the under in that game as well, 69 and a half. Nice, primarily because the Wake Forest defense 
is actually, I think, top 10 or top 15 defensive efficiency, which surprisingly is really, really weird. And also they get a Miles Fox, their 10-year lineman back. So take Wake, Louisville, under six, nine and a half. Take Texas plus three. I'm just going to say it like Dave said earlier. Oklahoma's not good. Texas is better. Texas plus three. Then take UTSA, the future conference USA champions, at plus three against Western Kentucky. Sorry, plus three and a half against Western Kentucky because Western Kentucky, as I said before, Danny, is not good. I'm sorry to hurt your feelings. And to end that all off, the DJ pick of all DJ picks. Give me UMass minus three and a half, sorry, plus three and a half, and Massachusetts plus 145. Total there. I think that UConn is a bad team, and UMass will get their win of the year against UConn. Danny, how'd I do? You're at a 115. No, no, no. Absolutely. Way. No Dude, way. your first pick took 20 seconds. You oh were good God. after that. The, the five games after that, you were under a minute. But that first uh, game, you were. You were rambling, my guy. That hurts. By that the way, hurts. I was going to bring that up when we were closing. <laughs> you taking UConn or UMass? I'm taking UMass over UConn, baby. UMass over UConn. The Fighting Wild Bills <laughs> oh, are going to cover this weekend and get the win and get me some my line points. But, folks, as you can tell, we had a good time here. Hopefully, we had a great time here. Thank you all so much for the love and support. Thank you all so much for listening. And thanks so much for the YouTube loves. And that's about it. Everyone, happy gambling. Good luck with everybody else out there. You know, joint and sticking with us as the thick men to help thicken up your wallets. For Drake, that was Danny. We'll see you next time on Locked On Seminoles. Who knows? Who knows, baby? <laughs>